Today I fucked up by telling my patient I was dating her boyfriend. This happened about two years ago and I wanted to die. Two parts to the backstory. Part 1, I'm engaged, now married, and we're trying for children via fertility treatments, so I guess you could say it's pretty serious. Part 2, my manager and office is amazing we laugh and joke a lot. We love our patients and joke with them a lot. My manager's brother is a cutie. Manager, her daughter and I often joke that he's my boyfriend. I've never spoken to him outside of the office. Story, my manager's sister-in-law comes in for an appointment and I'm supposed to present treatment to her. Family gets a discount and I asked my manager, which brother is she with? M, what? Me, which brother is she dating? It's not mine right? M, oh, ha ha no. She rushes off and I didn't think anything of it. Sil comes in the office. We always try and get to know our patients, so I was trying to get to know her, but I just stuck my foot in my mouth instead. Me, blah blah, small talk. Which brother are you dating? She mumbled something about not really. My manager's other brothers are in prison, so I thought the mumbling was about that. She asks me are you dating one? Which one are you dating? Me, ex and ready to explain how I'm not really. It's a joke with manager and I, but she just starts crying. I sat there trying to figure out what the hell just happened and she says, that's who I'm dating. Now, I'm trying to figure out how to explain myself without making my denial seem like he just got caught cheating and my heart falls into my pants and I wanted to die and I said can we please talk about this. I explain that I'm engaged and I've never spoken to ex outside of the office and I joke with manager and her kid that he's my boyfriend, but if he knew I told his girlfriend I was dating him, he would think I was a psychopath. And I pray that she believes me. She explains, she's not dating him either. They had been together a few years. They both have kids separately and their kids call each other mom and dad. She got pregnant and miscarried and was struggling to cope. He told her he couldn't deal with her like that and she needed to find someone better and dipped. They still go out and she was hoping they would fix things. At this point I just asked if I could hug her. I explained that we had also miscarried and I was a wreck. We cried and hugged and she turned out to be an angel of a human being. And then she said the most relieving sentence I've ever heard. Can you please not tell manager about this? I don't want anyone to know I cried about X. I hang out with her now and consider her a good friend. I'm grateful she's an amazing person and try and watch what I joke about. It's not the first time I said something that only I thought was funny, but probably the first time I just about ruined my life with a joke. Too long didn't read, I told a patient I was dating her boyfriend, even though I'd never spoken to him outside of the office. We both cried and hugged it out and now she's my bestie. So so glad that worked out. I met one of my lifelong best friends by being a complete dick to her. We have literally laughed about it for decades at this point. It surprises no one in our best friend group that I would do something like that. Her response to me in that moment that we met was so spot on that we hit it off like gangbusters. I'm so happy that you made such a great friend. Same with the friends of mine that know slash not a surprise that I would fuck up this way. Glad you made such a great friend by being your wild self. Smile. This is part of the reason I think calling someone a work wife or work husband is tacky and unnecessary. Why joke about it? Especially if the boyfriend doesn't know. As it turns out, it was tacky and unnecessary. Finally a good story for my free wholesome award. This story make me smile. Things that can happen are sometimes hilarious. Thank you so much. Glad I got you smiling. Smile. Damn that's a lot. I'm glad everything turned out okay and you made a friend, but wow, life is rough sometimes. Me too friend. I really lucked out here. I'm glad this turned out to be so wholesome. Also, as someone who knows the infertility journey all too well, I truly wish you the best of luck up. You and me both. There was a moment when I thought my life was over. And thank you so much. We just started another cycle. I could use all the hope and positivity in the world. Today I fucked up by leaving my new the ring in the shower. Today I fucked up by leaving my 23F new the ring in the shower. My mom, 56F, 
knows nothing about birth control other than the pill. So I take my maneuvering out in the shower as it's the most convenient for me. Well today I was running late to work and remembered it's time to take it out. So I did. And in my haste I accidentally left it there instead of immediately throwing it away. I came home to my mom wearing it as a hair tie and her saying how much she loved it. Also asking where I got it so she can buy more. I was horrified and told her my friend gave it to me so I don't know where to get more. Took it later in the day and threw it away. I don't think I'm going to tell her what that cool clear firm hair tie actually was. Too long didn't read, I left my new the ring in the shower. My mom thought it was a hair tie. Hilarity ensues. Buy her a set of clear silicone hair ties off Amazon and never speak of it again. Smile. Um guy didn't even know they made those. 10 years from now when you tell her this story, she'll probably laugh about it. It'll be great. Yeah don't mention it any sooner though. I'm sure I will when I'm older. But it's too soon RN, embarrassed smiley face better than accidentally using a diva cup as a shot glass. OMFG no. Just make sure to throw the spoon away. Spoon? I used a Nuva ring for years and I can't imagine how it would stay in one's hair well enough to hold a ponytail. They're not really rubbery, definitely not flexible enough to fold into a figure 8 and then in half. Does your mom have a lot of curly hair perhaps? Oh yeah. Her hair is huge and the curliest hair ever. So much so that any woman with hair even similar to hair I automatically think they're my mom. Today I fucked up by never being able to taste sourness again. Obligatory this happened 5 years ago. 5 years ago, I bought 6 warhead sprays while at the beach. We were heading home, and it was a 2 hour drive. With nothing else to do, I started having the sour sprays. Without realizing it, I ended up going through all 6 of them in the span of an hour. Once I gave my tongue some time to breathe, I realized that it was tingling like crazy. I ignored it. Figuring I just had a bit too much sour spray and I would be fine. What I didn't realize, was that I basically sprayed my taste buds to no longer taste sour. I had some sour candy a few weeks later, and it tasted sweet. I thought everything was fine, until I bit into a lemon. Pure sweetness. I figured I fried my taste buds of sour, looking back, and figured after a month that my taste buds would resume as normal. Nope. It's been 5 years at this point, and I have just begun being able to have a hint of sour again. Mostly sweetness, but my tongue just now registering that it's actually supposed to be sour. I completely fried my taste buds to ever taste sour again, which sucks because I love sour food so much. Be careful of warheads. TL, Dr. Six warhead sprays in an hour is a mistake. If you get past the initial sourness, a lemon starts to taste sweet. I eat lemons. Dude, your party trick is eat a lemon without crying. Go kiddo. Reminds me of a few years back when I ate two whole packs of the hard candy ones in a day and corroded away the entire inner lining my my mouth and tongue. That was not a fun time. Daughter did this recently with half a pack of sour worms at a sleepover. Poor kid was in a world of pain for a few days. Hum. So typically things like sour, sweet, salty, spicy, minty, bitterness, etc. Activate certain cells on your taste buds. Distinct flavors like vanilla, chocolate, rosemary, basil react the same way but either don't activate those cells, or the deactivation is so quick you don't notice it, or don't notice it so prominently. When you overload one of these senses, like your sour or sweet sense, all of those cells take a bit to deactivate. So when you eat a bunch of candy or cake and then try to drink a sweet soft drink, for example, your drink tastes not sweet until your cells that send the sweet signal have a chance to deactivate. A similar thing happens with spicy foods, though instead of flavor it's burning pain, or with minty herbs that make everything feel colder than they actually are. I'm not sure what's in warhead sprays, I'm gonna go look it up. But a flavoring that's super bitter or sour shouldn't keep those cells activated for 5 years. At the very most one might vomit, 
but the inability to taste sourness, that's a problem. Off the top of my head, the best I can guess is that those sprays have an ingredient that chemically burn the cells off your tongue, but if that's the case you wouldn't be able to taste anything not just sourness. If you're telling the truth then I, personally, would be concerned. I'm gonna go do some research. Also an eater of lemons and limes here. Warheads? That's rookie sourness. Barnett's Megas or candies if you want something actually sour. Warheads came back into my life after almost two decades and I was sorely disappointed they did not live up to memory of their intensity. I will investigate these candies you mention. If my first instinct isn't to spit the candy out, it isn't sour enough.